Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, welcome to what has uh, sort of become the video blog because uh, there began to be too much for me to uh, write about in one sitting. So this is how I'm choosing to catch up. Hope you love it. If you don't, uh, you know I don't know what to say. Um, good luck. Uh, turn off my feed. Do whatever you need to do. Uh, but uh, this might be the way it is for for a little while uh, as I uh, go through my spotty internet problems. Uh, so uh, so anyway, I would like to tell you about my trip uh, to Europa. Um, it's it's been a long what a long strange trip it's been. Uh, Greg will like that. It uh, it was very interesting. Started off in Omaha, of course. Jessica dropped me off at the plane uh, faithfully. Um, Bill had shown up with some last-minute uh, hostel plans. A hostel, for those of you who don't know, uh, is actually not a person on the island that is, you know, part of the others. No, that is lost. Uh, that is different. This sort of hostel is basically a place to keep your crap. Uh, it is a place that people stay that is not a hotel. They don't have te television. They don't have, uh, you know, all of the sort of comforts of home that a hotel was would. But they're also less expensive, and I think that's why they're attractive to travelers. At any rate, uh, Bill uh, and I had been planning to try to plan my first couple of days in Berlin, but things got really uh, crazy there near the end, and we never got to meet. So he showed up at the airport with some plans, and... I stuffed them in my bag and tried to appear confident uh, that uh, <laughs> moving to Europe five for five months didn't. I was trying to pretend it didn't scare the crap out of me, and I'm pretty sure it didn't. Uh, the pretending part didn't work, but you know what? I try. I always try. Anyway, so uh, so there I was in Omaha waiting for my flight. Uh, flight went well. Uh, there was really no. There was really nothing spectacular uh, about the flight at all. I began to get increasingly nervous, and so I just tried to, you know, say a little mantra and get through it, basically. That's what I do. And, uh, and yeah, I arrived in Chicago, uh, went through security, uh, went through the ticketing again. Didn't know if I should or, or not. Uh, the guy at the Omaha counter had said I needed them to print me out a couple of boarding passes because his printer wasn't working, so... I had checked my big bag in Omaha, and I had my carry-on, my backpack, uh, and my, uh, my my smaller bag with me. And the lady at the counter said there was probably no way that I could get the smaller bag on and that I should go ahead and check it because uh, one of their assistant pilots, or I don't know, somebody, somebody who helps fly the plane, was sick uh, the night before. And so they were stuffing two flights into my flight. And uh, she said that, uh, but, but, but as an added uh, fabulousness, I got bumped to business class, uh, which business class is flying right. Uh, let me tell you, it was fantastic. Um, there, it was, there was a lot going on there. First of all, I was in this kind of little compartment. And uh, in this little uh, kind of compartment, they had a, like a flip-out TV screen and this footstool and chairs that reclined all the way. And they fed us gourmet food. And right away, they offered me a glass of champagne, which, <laughs> nope, give me the juice. Uh, juice is good. So I drank a lot of orange juice because they offered it to me. And so, you know, uh, it's like the people come around with the coffee. Yes. Uh, you know, liquid. Yes. Liquid beverage refreshment. Now alcoholic. Uh, great. So I uh, had plenty of those and uh, plenty of the juices and then also uh, plenty of coffee as well. They make good coffee. And the food was really good. I mean, it was like surprisingly good uh, for an airplane. And at one point they came around with you know, they hung up my coat for me. Uh, they, they just did all kinds of things. At one point, they came around with a warm towel. And, uh, you know, uh, everybody else had accepted one. So I thought, what the hell? I'll take one, too. And then I just, I didn't know what to do with it. What, what do you do with a warm towel? So uh, I just watched everybody else very subtly. Uh, I think subtly, anyway. And everybody else seemed to be washing their hands with it. So I did the same thing. Um, and it uh, turned out fine. Uh, so... Uh, got the towel, washed the hands, all was fabulous. I watched some movies. 
Uh, I watched Eat, Pray, Love, which I had wanted to watch, but I'd never gotten to go. So, uh, so that was nice. I was like, I would like to read the book, but if there is a movie, I like to see the movie before I read the book because then I'm not so disappointed. And uh, it was a very good movie, actually. So uh, I'll be purchasing that book uh, someday later. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I'm pretty sure I can't find it in English here. Um, So anyway, watched the movie. It was nice. And then I, oh, I watched uh, The Social Network again, uh, which was, I mean, it's fascinating to me, that movie. The way that those ideas are generated and just the whole friendship dynamic was really interesting to me too and then I watched Juno again because it makes me laugh and uh and then I had I don't know 40 minutes before the plane landed so I just listened to some drum music and tried to calm myself down because uh you know I'm landing in a foreign country um are they gonna let me in is always the you know in my brain so so yeah we landed the plane uh they gave me my coat back uh you know, got my luggage, uh, and ran through security. I mean, I just, I just kind of go with the crowd around me a lot of times, especially, you know, in airports and stuff like that. And I, I really, I hadn't checked what time my next flight was, so I didn't know. And so when other people around me were hurrying, I hurried too. And, um, interesting note, people don't always stand on escalators here. Uh, sometimes they just, you know, run up them. Uh, so, but just, it seems so caffeinated to me. I didn't do it. I, I just, you know, but anyways, uh, so went through security, seemed like I, it seemed like in the past, you know, in that, uh, what was it? 36 hours. I probably took my belt off 17 times. I don't know why I thought it was a good belt day, but it wasn't, it was dumb. Let me just say that anyway. Um, belt shoes, I don't know, uh, a whole lot of things. I did wear my airport shoes uh, for the experience. It was fabulous. And so then, uh, after that, I uh, went through security and realized I probably had a good couple of hours to my next flight. And interestingly enough, so I landed at Heathrow, which is in London. And, oh, of course, all the accents, you know, <laughs> turned up overnight. Uh, So that was kind of fun. I always loved listening to accents. So I was listening to the intercom and kind of doing all that. And interestingly enough, in the States, they they print your gate on the ticket. You know which gate you're going to when you check in. But at Heathrow, um, they do it differently. You're just supposed to check the board for when your plane arrives, when your gate is being, you know, when you're being boarded. Uh, So they have these huge boards all over the place. So I sat down directly in front of one, and I was beginning to kind of get sleepy at that stage. Now, most people kind of, I don't know, slept or napped on the flight over, and I really thought I was going to do that, too, because I really only had, like, three hours of sleep the night before, three and a half, maybe, so I thought, oh, good, you know, that'll be enough, but, uh, you know, that'll be enough to make me want to sleep on the plane, and I didn't sleep on the plane at all. So I kind of uh, sat in front of the boards and had a good couple of hours to, to my next uh, rendezvous uh, with an airplane. And so I ate one of the energy bars I kept in my bag and because I like stopped up on 14 of them before I came here. It was a smart thing to do. And so, uh, yeah, I realized I had all the, so I'm dozing and, and then I kind of, I wake up and I realized that my it says that the gate for I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be boarding this this plane this next plane is supposed to be taking off at 9:55 a.m. But the and so and it also said that the gate would close at 9:35 or something like that. And it was 9:20 and my flight still didn't have a gate with it. So I kind of I was getting a little worried. But then the gate popped up and so I ran over there and. Um, and then the, the announcement came that the flight was delayed because Berlin was having bad weather. And so I thought, okay, well, you know, I mean, I didn't plan anything. I didn't have enough time to plan anything getting to Berlin. So fabulous, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm kind of dozing off. And then they come over to the intercom and say that the flight's been canceled. Well, I have never actually had that happen to me before. So I didn't know what that meant. Does that mean that I have to go and buy another ticket now? Doesn't that, then that doesn't seem right. Um, you know, what? what's going to happen? So 
I began to employ a skill that I know is underused in my life and uh, and I probably need to work on spiritually and that is ask somebody uh, don't just stand there and make things up because <laughs> you'll be in hell so so I went up to the you know the lady who had made the announcement I said okay first time I'm done this what does that mean and she said well we're still going to get you there. We just, that flight number is canceled. You'll, your flight will be put in with another flight and we'll tell you and issue a voucher for when that flight is. And I'm like, fantastic. So at that point I was getting hungry and I knew an injury bar wasn't going to cut it twice in a row. So I wandered around. The very first thing I spent money on in Europe was a Starbucks venti, not fat latte. And uh, I know you're proud, Jessica. So I uh, purchased a latte, of course. And then I went and uh, grabbed a bowl of soup with some noodles in it uh, that was like way too much. Because uh, it said one price on the thing. And I'm like, OK, here you go. I handed her the euros. And she's like, oh, you're paying in euros. Well. It cost this much in pounds, and so it was like a couple of bucks extra. And so I'm like, okay, you know, great. Um, it's a ten dollar cardboard thing of soup, but you know, whatever. I, I'm really hungry now, so uh, I just went ahead and and did that, and then I proceeded to go back to my gate and wait for my flight, um, which was now at one o'clock. And uh, in the meantime, I thought, well, I'll get online and tell you know, check in, tell everybody I'm okay. Um, and then I took out my phone and it gave me the black screen of death. And I thought, I think I charged this bad boy before I left. But so I went ahead and broke out my computer, which I knew had plenty of battery and I plugged in, uh, my computer will charge my phone. So I plugged it into my phone and still a black screen of death, which told me that something else was wrong entirely, but I didn't have time to figure it out. So I, because uh, I, you know, we were boarding the plane in 20 minutes. So I tossed it back in my pocket, put my computer back in my bag. Of course, <laughs> of course, my carry-on has my laptop, all of my devices, all of my cords, and like a pair of underwear. I mean, that's all I got on me. So, uh, so you know. Anyway, so uh, went on to the next plane, and. By that time, I was really getting tired. I had just eaten, and you know, coffee doesn't have any effect on me, like caffeine-wise. So, so I got on the plane, and uh, we got on the plane. We boarded, and the pilot said we have an hour's worth of wait on the tarmac. And so, uh, I fell asleep five minutes after I sat down, and I remained asleep throughout takeoff. Uh, throughout almost the entire flight. I probably got a good three hours, probably not probably not a good three hours. It was that sitting up sleep where every once in a while you go, you know, that kind of sleep. Uh, so, woo, uh, fun, but, uh, you know, serviceable. So uh, I woke up, there was probably a half an hour till we landed in Berlin. And uh, and that, that was fine with me. Landed, got off the plane, hung out at the luggage place. Well, you know, a little while, I, I, I uh, snatched up my medium-sized bag, and I was waiting for the big bag, the one that uh, Alyssa and Rena and I bought at Walmart the night before, because I needed it, and uh, waiting and waiting and waiting, and hmm, it's not here, really. I don't think so, because the belt has stopped, and there's some other dudes here with, like, these orange, you know pantsuit things that they wear and I assumed they were luggage handlers and and uh, they said a few words to me which I didn't understand but um, there was a sign and and this is pretty much everywhere I've been so far which has kind of been major cities but um, they have signs in German and in English sometimes so uh, so you can kind of you can still sort of navigate even though if you don't know too much German which uh, I don't uh, anyway so uh, the guys pointed at the sign and and I followed the sign well there was this other lady too uh, that had lost her luggage turns out she's from Brooklyn uh, living in Germany now and uh, Colleen and I had a really long conversation uh, waiting to report about our baggage because uh, it was like an hour and a half I mean that line was long <laughs> 